Good morning, YouTube. So it is like seven o'clock in the morning here. Uh, we are at my parents' house. That's their garage behind me. And uh, we're building a retaining wall because the first attempt my father had at a retaining wall, well, it wasn't exactly successful. It was good for about 10 years, but then it started uh, letting go. So he learned a lot about uh, how to build a retaining wall and how not to. So I'm going to uh, go into how to build a retaining wall for uh, relatively cheap, but um, how to make it last. So that's uh, what this video is all about. So you can see remnants of the old retaining wall here, which was made with four by fours. Now, someone might say that would do really well, especially if anchored right. I mean, my father did. He, you can't see anymore because we cut it all off and it was like up to here. Uh, so the thing is he put spikes in there, large spikes, along with he drilled down and he would put rebar through like three layers of this. Uh, the issue with this, even though it's pressure treated, is that it's softwood, okay? And another thing you can't tell is he actually built it straight up, okay? So it used to be all in a continuous line. So those were the two main learning points. And you can see he did put, uh, you can see over here, he did put dog legs in here, which uh, held somewhat, but uh, I don't think we, he put enough. So that's what these are. These are dog legs. So what that does is it anchors this into the ground. So like this entire section of ground would have to push out in order to uh, move this wall, okay? As long as the ground here, which is gonna be more stable than the ground out here, um, this is gonna help anchor it into, uh, into the ground further away in order to um, allow this to have added strength so you can see here this is not touching if you were to build something like and reinforce like we're doing here don't allow your new dog leg and your old one to be touching because that when it when it continues to give it'll actually be that what's causing your problem it would be pushing this and which would be pushing here okay so that's one thing is um the dog legs Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have two layers of it. So this is just the first layer. And we're gonna have another layer once we get up to the next height. And we're gonna put them like in between these dog legs that are being built. So that's one thing. Second thing, this is all hardwood. Hardwood, and you see on the bottom here, these are railroad ties, which are treated with creosote. Uh, and that is never gonna rot. Like that's gonna take freaking decades to rot and like these are already a couple of decades old so you can see here your railroad ties are what's on the ground okay and we uh we dug a little bit into the ground for two reasons one to make sure that this is all level your main thing is uh, making sure that your initial first layer is all level and all in a line and the way we did made it a line was we went at that very corner we tied a rope and we found out like i measured from here to here made sure that it was like 85 centimeter or inches went there to there made sure it's 85 made sure it was all within a square okay and then we extended out a little bit and we just uh had a piece of rope like a chalk line which is what we actually used and made sure that she was all nice in a row because you want that first layer to uh, obviously be what's in line because you're gonna build up on that. So um, putting it in the ground adds a little extra strength. I'm gonna see if you can see in here. You can see how actually it's in a bit of a stepwise fashion. I'm not sure if you can see here. Let me get a little closer. This one's a little better. You can see how it goes step, step, step. Now that's actually going to add strength as well. Rather than having it straight down, you step, have like a step-like fashion. Um, that's going to help uh, oppose the the pressure of all of this ground because this is going to be tons of earth that's going to want to settle over a long period of time. And you're going to have little divots that are going to develop whenever stuff like under here starts to settle better. Um, so you will have to like add some extra gravel. These are things that we've learned over time, but. Uh, on top of that, you can see we have the inner uh, 
support beams, which you can see another version of this. Uh, so once we get up to the six or seven levels, you can see this is more of a uh, closer to finished product here. Uh, he's gonna cut them off and he's gonna sandwich them in place and that's gonna also help. And these are all, uh, these are held into the ground using one of these. This is something my, my father just went to a uh, local welder. He got him to bend out uh, a U shape, put some holes in it. Okay, and you uh, attach this spike, which is sharpened. You literally just uh, tap that right on the other side of this, put that right into the ground, and then put your next one right on top of there, and that adds for extra support. So it's all about support and opposing these uh, pressures that are gonna wanna push your um, uh, wall out using the right materials, such as hardwood, rebar. We're, uh, we're taking rebar, and that's how we put uh, the railroad ties in here is that we drilled holes through um, and just just snug enough that the rebar could just barely fit through and then we uh, took a sledgehammer and we uh, we put like three or four feet worth of rebar into the ground and that's what's holding the railroad ties in place make sure those railroad ties are all level then you build up on those in a step like fashion and use well I'm not sure if I have a spike so here we go so these spikes are what are holding each one of those in place so you can see how that really ties into each other now uh, obviously we have to pre-drill a little bit of this because this is again this is hard stuff um, and these will bend we have to use uh, sledgehammers to get those through so uh, you want to pre-drill but that that far through tap it in a little bit deeper i found this to work with a smaller sledgehammer and then send her the rest of the way home with a larger sledgehammer make sure you hit it square on or else this will bend and you are not getting that out it's not like a normal nail you are not getting that out you'll either just have to bang it into the wood or cut it right off with a, a grinder so uh that's pretty much the basics i don't know what else to say about this other than it's a lot of work. Uh, we're using chainsaws, sledgehammers in order to put that stuff in. And uh, yeah, that, that was one day. We did this section all in one day. Uh, we hope to have it up to here by the end of the day and sandwiched in. And uh, that is how you build a retaining wall on a budget. He, this was, a lot of this was cheap or free wood because it was all uh, reuse stuff that the government had um, he got all this uh, wood for like ten dollars a piece which is uh, actually I'm, I'm very impressed with that price so if anybody has any comments or questions feel free to leave them in the link below and uh, I'm sorry at the bottom and uh, I don't really have any links to this this is gonna be it is what it is uh, a very simple project but it's a very big project and uh, if you're gonna do this you only want to do this once so I wish anyone who's uh, taking on one of these projects, uh, good luck. Oh, and another quick uh, thing is something that also helps um, solidify things is if once you have everything done, plant trees or plant grass because um, all of those roots intertangled actually add for a lot of strength. So um, that's, that's how uh, we're gonna do it. And the final product, well, I'll try and uh, post a picture at the end of this video. So here I've included some pictures just to uh, demonstrate some of the other steps uh, in between uh, all the videos that I took. As you can see, uh, there was a lot of work that was done in these 48 hours. So this is up until you can see this um, that's the second last layer. So we're pretty much done here. And it go goes on a gradient. Let's the see. dog legs. The dog legs are all done. We are snacked out at the moment. And yeah, the um, all these dog legs in here are quite impressed with how well it turned out, especially this middle one, which is 
like double dog legged. You can make that out. One's the first one's really deep, the second one's in the middle, and should create quite a bit of drag. But yeah, this turned out very well. I'm very happy the way it was all very rough. It was all cut with a chainsaw and uh, put in with a sledgehammer. But um, this turned out decent enough. I'm very happy with it. So this is after two days. We have got the wall built. We have most of the support um, beams, like not the ones on the outside, but that's something I can totally leave my father with and he can do at a later date. It's not gonna uh, make or break the project. But we have the majority of it filled in already. We've built this bad boy in two days with nothing but sledgehammers, a chainsaw, and a bunch of spikes. And, uh, yeah, got her mostly filled. 48 hours and non-stop work. Than 48 hours, buddy. This is true, less than 48 hours. So, uh, very pleased with the way this has gone down. We have another load coming in. Obviously, we're gonna layer crushed rock over top of uh, gravel and uh, make sure all these things are filled in. Obviously, this is gonna take a while to settle. Um, this stuff is very loose and will need to settle over the course of a couple of months. The tar paper is there to protect the wood. Yeah, and the tar paper is there to protect the wood and that goes all the way down. Yeah, so Dad, say hello to YouTube. This Hi. has become a video. I'm Steve Cameron. <laughs> and we did this in less than 48 hours. So this is a few months after the fact. Um, this is the first time I'm getting back up to bathroom since we built this. You can see uh, my father uh, filled this all in, took the time to drive a car or truck uh, over this multiple, multiple times to really pack this down. And uh, that's pretty much set. Now you can see he put, uh, how he capped this off and that's again to just hold them all in tight. And I showed you before how he had, um, I can't see it on this one. On here, you can see right there how he's got those pegs that go down into the ground and then they're just anchored that way. So that's how it ended up. It actually, uh, then uh, he got somebody to come and seal his uh, driveway and he got them to uh, spray this as well. So that's going to add an extra couple of years on that um, for uh, waterproofing. So I think that turned out really well. It looks super solid, very professional. And that was, and he's got these little lights on there. It looks beautiful at night. He's going to, once this is all um, set for like two years, then he's going to go ahead and pave that as well. But uh, no, very happy with the way that retaining wall turned out.